We have this from the Daily Mail. Donald Trump says Kamala Harris became a black person <laughs> after being Indian all the way. And so now, uh, what do we have this? Um, do we have this one? Uh, here we go. Anna Navarro Cardenas, who is, uh, what is she? She's a Nicaraguan American. CNN in the view says, Idiot. in front of black audience, Trump argues Kamala Harris isn't black. In front of white audiences, Vance argues she's a DEI hire who's gotten where she is because she's a black woman. How can they argue both things at the same time about the same person? Bunch of clowns. Because that's what Democrats do. No, they, no, no. They, they, because, they... She's, because she's Indian. Like, you, like, DEI hire could be because she's a woman. It's, sure. not, it's not even about race. Right. But uh, now they're mad because Trump made this. He pointed this out, and he pointed it out accurately. The political play a long time ago was that she was an Indian woman. And the political play today is that she's a black woman. She is both, but it is a political maneuver to try and brand her with one or the other race. How about four, five years ago or six years ago? And I think actually, I think it was eight years ago. They say she's Indian Jamaican and just point out that she's biracial. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think they'll they'll do whatever they need. They'll say whatever they need to say in the moment to accomplish their goal um if they didn't have and that's exactly what trump is pointing they, out. they would have nothing right? if they didn't have double standards they have no standards at all correct mm -hmm. yeah yeah i think kamal I harris think that's was, exactly right yeah i think kamal harris was a win for the biden administration because she was sort of a, a a biracial woman who therefore they could trot out at any occasion right like mm -hmm. when they need someone to be the spokesperson for diversity they have kamala harris and you know it, that's cool if that's what you think your administration needs i think it's kind of gross but you know, it, it's not clear that they hired her for merit they, they hired her could because of what she looks like weird could it perhaps be weird that they do that? The other thing, too, speaking of the double standards, is you had Pete Buttigieg recently speaking to the New York Times on uh, one of their podcasts, what is The Daily? And he was asked outright, and he's like been a huge Kamala surrogate at this point, and he was asked if he thought Kamala Harris should accept the invitation from Fox to debate on September 17th, which was the has been the only invitation held out to Kamala her. Harris as opposed to her like dropping in to try and fill mm -hmm. Biden's shoes. And uh, Pete Buttigieg said that he did not think she should debate on Fox because he thought they were too biased. <laughs> but he does apparently think that Trump should debate not Joe Biden in a ABC debate on yeah, September on 10th, right. even though Kamala Harris wasn't invited to that debate. So who's going to be at that September 10th debate? Uh, nobody so far. And Trump's you really just, town hall? Yeah, you really just have Kamala Harris's campaign demanding that Trump show up on terms that he agreed to to debate Joe Biden, even though he hasn't Jeez. agreed to those terms for her. I don't I, I suppose. Uh, you know, I wonder why Trump doesn't debate Kamala Harris. He has yeah. said that I mean, he, he would, would. but I, this is the thing about the Fox invitation, which came out a couple of days ago. You know, that's that network saying, like, now that the contract seems to be void because Biden is no longer in the race. We will host a debate between Kamala Harris and Trump. And, you know, Trump had said, I'm happy to debate her. We can have multiple debates. But I actually don't think it's that unreasonable for him to say, like, but as you have now suddenly dropped in a new candidate, yeah. that does not mean we have to stick to this agreement right. with ABC News. Right. Yeah, and especially because I think ABC News has been kind of sketchy this summer. Yeah, they haven't been so great. Yeah. And there, there is def definitely this double standard where everyone's just kind of assuming that because the Democrats have you know, changed their presumptive nominee, that means that presumptive nominee is entitled to everything that Joe Biden had, you know, earned as president and as the candidate. And I don't see why uh, the Trump campaign should agree to any yeah, of those Yeah, especially things. now since it's Kamala and not, you could argue that because Biden is the incumbent that maybe he gets to pick the rules. I, I don't agree with that particularly, but you could make the argument. But in this case, you have uh, two people who are currently not president, both vying for the same office. Mm -hmm. So for sure, I, I would if I was him, I would absolutely try to renegotiate that and say, OK, well, maybe we'll do this one on ABC, but we're going to do one on Fox then so that at least we have two or we'll pick somebody neutral in the well, middle. And you guys don't get some it, it, we've we've allowed Democrats to run the rules of these debates. I don't exactly know how that happened. But it just seems like it's been that way. And Trump has sort of had to just take what he can get in a sense. Well, Trump's team, back when they were debating <clears throat> the debates before the first one, had said, like, we're happy to do three. Because these aren't being run by the official, like, presidential right. debate body. They, they're, they're run by these, like, agreements between the campaigns and the networks. Uh, and typically there are three every year. So 
they had scheduled this one uh, in in uh, May, and then they were like renewed again in September, and then. There was Trump's team had said, well, we'll do a third. And Biden's team had said no. Mm. So it's this it's this weird thing where like the Biden campaign was very different than Harris's campaign because their candidate had struggles that they say Kamala doesn't have. Right. And it seems largely like those are related to age. He needed different right. support. They didn't want people in the room. This question of breaks. Is he, are they going to sit down? Um, I don't know why Kamala Harris would want to debate the way that Biden was going to debate, because theoretically she's younger. She's more energetic. She shouldn't want the same format. Uh, so I, I, I don't understand why her her campaign is acting like this is such a weird thing that they would go back to the drawing board and renegotiate the terms. I thought she wasn't Biden 2.0. I thought she was her own special person. And, and who's J.D. Vance going to debate now? We don't even know. Yeah, yeah. We should no find idea. out by Tuesday. What, Tuesday. Yeah, it's I think, Tuesday yeah. is the time because she's supposed to, Kamala Harris is supposed to hold a joint rally in Philly on Tuesday with an like? as yet to be named Kelly. VP you think Mark candidate. Kelly? Yeah. I still think it's going to be Bashir. Bashar, I should learn his name before it happens. Bashir. From, from, they're, they're, Bashir. Bashir. Yes. They're, right. they're, yeah. So the speculate. So uh, I think the betting odds were for Kelly, but there was some news report saying the rumor was it was going to be a governor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I I think it'll be the governor of Kentucky. I mean, don't. I'm not willing to put money on this. I don't know for sure, but uh, you know, he's definitely posturing like it's going to be him online. Mm -hmm. I think they all kind of really hoping. Well, they were. There was a rumor that the DNC was trying to get a bunch of Wall Street firms to donate ahead of the announcement for a VP because they're not allowed to donate if there's a sitting governor on the ticket or something like that. Can, can we just point out real quick? I want to stress this: that Donald Trump destroyed Joe Biden in that debate so horribly that Joe Biden dropped out of the race. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. <laughs> it, it, it is. I, he it, was forced out. His his performance was so atrocious yeah. against Donald Trump. We got to get rid of this the guy. Democrats shoot him in the Democrats panicked <laughs> and, and removed yeah. him from, from the race. Yeah, yeah, which should not be a thing you're allowed to do. You shouldn't just be like, oh, this candidate that we picked that we've been running this whole time, it turns out that he's not great against the other guy. So let's switch it up real quick yeah. and just pretend we never did. Well, we were saying before, it's I don't think Harris should just get to act like she inherits everything. That's Biden what I got. think, too. And I think that should apply to the voters, right? She made a big show. This is all the reporting I heard, you know, that Sunday that, that Biden dropped out and endorsed her, uh, that she was calling all these organizations, these, right. these union workers, all the of delegates. these people, delegates saying, I'm going to earn your vote. And apparently she had earned their vote by 9 a.m. on Monday morning. Right. I mean, it was amazing how fast people coalesced around And then they her. say it's grassroots, which is right. just such a huge lie. But I wonder <laughs> if the voters feel that way. I think there must be some voters who feel a certain level of whiplash and who also looked at her being like, I didn't support you in 2020. It's I not like she a took lot of second place. who just feel relieved. Yeah. I mean, I'll tell you, there's because uh, they want somebody to vote for and they weren't going to vote for Biden. But once that honeymoon f like falls apart. Yeah, but the honeymoon last? doesn't have to be very long. Right. I mean, it's I only mean, for her, it just has to get election. Well, and, and for her, it just has to be until she gets on the ticket because then they don't have any other choices. Right. That's true. Too. Yeah. I think there's a lot of people on the left that are really not very happy about Kamala. Uh, I have some friends who are pretty far on the left uh and none of them really like her they she's a former prosecutor put all these people in jail for you know drug crimes and things that they don't really believe in and they're not really hot on her um i i i would be i would be surprised i i i, I will be surprised to see how the election goes she also spearheaded um <clears throat> male rapists being able to be housed in women's prisons, oh, women's prisons? in prisons? california perfect right yeah it was yep. great. Amy Ichikawa from Woman to Woman, which is an advocacy, advocacy group for uh, incarcerated women, was on Charlie Kirk today talking about it. And it's pretty bad. I mean, it's pretty bad at the uh, Chowchilla facility, what's going on there. There's men in the prison. There's, you know, there's sexual relationships going on. There's abuse going on. Um, and it's really a big problem. There's no reason that women's prisons in California should be handing out contraception <laughs> to women. They should not have yeah. to worry about getting pregnant by other inmates in a women's correctional facility. And it disrupts the ability to, um, you know, uh, heal and to, uh, be redeemed right if you're trying to reform like someone hours, subject yeah. them to abuse and terror yeah. is now you're putting them in go. a much worse because, situation yeah and like so many women who are in prison were already subject to abuse mm -hmm. that's a big part of how women end up in prison you know well, we got 
male boxers fighting women in the Olympics. Yeah, right that's now. that, that was four years ago too, though. Just yeah. turned on its that, head. I, I'm pretty sure there's a photo of those same male boxers in 2020 fighting the Olympics. So it's 2021. Mm-hmm. It was oh, postponed, yeah, right. but they've been allowed to fight for a long time, and that's I, and that's why the betting odds any favor the male. You could argue that it's the least. Uh, or if, if, how do I? Say like the this? most obvious. Yeah, the you most don't obvious. Do it. I mean, I, I've been in combat sports my entire life. I, I start, started wrestling when I was twelve. Been doing jujitsu for fifteen years. I I had women on my wrestling team in middle school, high school. Uh, I train with women every day at my jujitsu academy. And if you spend fifteen minutes in any combat sport and you you see the differences, you would it would immediately. I, I feel like it would change almost anybody's mind except for the most radical people who are just an you know total npc out to lunch uh downloading the program every night it, it's it's so obvious I, I don't know how anybody can't see it thanks for watching this clip from timcast irl make sure to check out the live show monday through friday at 8 p.m on this channel subscribe and we'll see you all there